Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Stone. Today we're going to be solving square root inequalities, that inequality symbol. You have to do them almost the same way as regular equations where you want the square root completely by itself and it either being equal to a number or some other thing. And to get rid of it, you have to square both sides. You would end up with canceling that part out. X minus 4 is less than or equal to 25. So from here, you would add the 4 over and you would find out that X is less than or equal to 29. Congratulations, you have got half, half of your answer. This would be the part of your answer that most people would consider the like solving part. Um, but from here, now we need to also recognize that X minus 4, that part underneath the square root, has to be positive because you can't square root a negative number. So that has to be greater than, but it could also equal zero because you can take the square root of zero. And if you solved that, you would be adding four to both sides and you would find out that X also has to be greater than or equal to four. So you get two answers for this. Now, if you want to be lazy, you could call it like that and you could say X is greater than four, but less than 29 which in most cases you would need to put the X in between those two numbers and call and have that as your final answer. However, however, this is not gonna work every single time and you need to do something called a number line test. You need to put four on the number line, you need to put 29 on the number line and depending on the complexity of the problem, this one was our first one, really easy, you would need to test out all three zones. So you would need to pick out a number smaller than four, like, like zero. Zero is smaller than four. You need to pick out a number in between four and 29, like 10. 10 is in between four and 29. And you would need to pick out a number bigger than 29, like, like 30. 30 is bigger than 29. Anything in between or bigger or smaller. And you need to test all three out to see if all three work or if one works and one doesn't to see if it's in fact a right answer. You should not ever plug in the four or the 29 though because that is not how these work. We want to figure out if it's less than five, not equal to five all the time. So let's plug in a zero. Let's say, what, what is zero minus four? The square root of that, is that less than or equal to five? Well, the square root of zero minus four is negative four. Negative four doesn't even square root. So that one doesn't work. We didn't expect it to work. We expected the one in between four and 29 to work. Plugging in a 10. So the square root of 10 minus four, is that less than or equal to five? Well, 10 minus four is six. The square root of six, you could use a calculator to figure out, but it's somewhere in between two and three because the square root of four is two and the square root of nine is three. So this is about 2.5. Well, 2.5 is less than five, so that does work. Then you can plug in the 30. The square root of 30 minus four, is that less than or equal to five? Well, that's the square root of 26, and the square root of 26 is not less than five because the square root of 25 is less than five. The square root of 26 is about 5.1. That is not less than or equal to five. The 30 does not work. The only values that did were in between four and 29. Like I said with our original answer that I said, if you wanted to be lazy, you could stop there. The next two examples, you probably can't be lazy. I picked them out myself. Uh, which means that they're probably going to be different. So here, everything looks the same, right? You're going to square both sides, square both sides, and you end up with 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 16. You're going to solve that equation. You're going to get upset that I gave you a fraction because when we subtract 1, we get 2x is less than or equal to 15, and x is greater than or equal to 7.5 when we divide 15 by two. Remember, that's half of your answer. You also need to do two X plus one is greater than or equal to zero. And then you would subtract one and divide and get negative one half. So we got our two answers. It's um, a little misleading this time because see how it says greater than negative one half, but also greater than 7.5. Um, if we did that on a number line, I don't know why my number line's doing that. If we did that on a number, number line, we got negative one half and we got 7.5 and they would both be filled in and both be going this away. 
Um, so the question is, which one's right? Uh, well, the negative one half is what we call the restriction. And our answer that we got was not really restricted by it. So we should really still test all three zones to see what's going on. So let's plug in a number smaller than one, negative one half. What's anything smaller than negative one half? I would go with um, negative five. Negative five is definitely smaller than negative one half. In between negative one half and 7.5, let's go with the number, uh, let's go with one. Why not? One's in between those two. And then bigger than 7.5, we got 10. 10 is what we expect to work because that's the one greater than 7.5. The number one maybe will work. And negative five, I wouldn't expect to work. Let's try them out. Square root of two times negative five plus one. Is that greater than or equal to negative four? Well, here we would end up with another imaginary answer because two times negative five is negative nine plus one. I already added the negative, uh, the one with it. Negative 10 plus one is negative nine. Negative nine does not square root. So this does not work. Whoosh, whoosh. Negative five out. The number one, if we plug in the number one, we end up with two times one plus one. Is that greater than or equal to negative four? And the answer to that is, 2 plus 1 is 3. The square root of 3 is positive, and any positive number is greater than or equal to negative 4. So this actually worked. This negative 1 half, which wouldn't have been an answer if we just solved it outright, gave us a real value. Now the 10. We expect the 10 to work. Let's see if it actually does. So 10 times 2 plus 1 is the square root of that bigger than or equal to negative 4? Well, that would be the square root of 21. The square root of 21 is positive, like 4 point something. And that is bigger than negative 4 as well. So that worked as well. So how are we going to write our answer then? We can't just say greater than negative 1 half and greater than 7.5 because both of those are overlapping kind of right here. So they both kind of share that same area. The one answer that you would actually say is x is greater than or equal to negative one half because that incorporates the 7.5 as well. Okay, so it's a little tricky, but it is true. Next one, let's see what this one does. All right, so here we got negative two Square root of x plus 1 less than negative 8. If we divide by negative 2, which we must do, we get the square root of x plus 1 has to be greater than positive 4 because we flip the inequality sign anytime you multiply or divide by a negative number. Square both sides. So we square to cancel that out, and we would square the 4. And... We get x plus 1 is greater than 16, which means subtract the 1 over. x is greater than 15. But then always go back to your original. What is underneath the square root has to be greater than or equal to 0. Subtract 1. Subtract 1. x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1 as well. Okay? So we got two answers. This time is again. And again, this time, we got... Both of them going to the right. A little different, though, because it's a hollow circle at 15 going to the right, but a filled-in circle at the negative 1 going to the right. So we might have an issue because 15 supposedly won't work at all. Okay, so let's see what happens. Let's plug in a number smaller than negative 1. Let's plug in 0. Let's plug in a number in oops, smaller than negative 1. That would be like negative 10. Uh, in between negative 1 and 15, that would be 0. Bigger than 15, that would be like 20. Okay? So I'm going to plug it into this one. The square root of x plus 1, 1 has to be greater than 4. So if we did square root of negative 10 plus 1, is that greater than 4? And the answer is no, because that would be a negative number, and that does not work. Then we're going to plug in 0. 0 plus 1 is the square root of that going to be greater than 4. And the answer to that is also no, because the square root of 1 is not greater than 4. So this area did not work. Well, let's try 20. Maybe 20 would work. Square root of 20 plus 1, is that going to be greater than 4? Well, that's going to be the square root of 21. The square root of 21 is about 4.5-ish or 4.6. 
And last time I checked, that is greater than four. So that worked. So what area is included in our answer? The 15 one, because it's greater than the 15. That zone worked. So our only answer this time would be greater than or equal to 15. Okay, one more. It's gonna be a quick one, I promise. Let's say we got the square root of x, just square root of x, is less than negative three. Simple, right? Square both sides, x would be less than nine, because negative three squared is nine. Easy. And what's underneath the square root, that x, also has to be greater than or equal to zero. Well, uh, I told you it was going to be a quick one. We got nine, we got zero, and we expect it to be greater than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to nine. So we would expect it to be in those two, but let's see what actually happens. So let's see, uh, let's plug in a number smaller than zero, like uh, negative five, in between zero and nine, like positive five, why not? And then 10 is bigger than nine, any number bigger than nine. Let's see what happens. Negative five doesn't square root. We already knew that wasn't gonna work. Negative five's out. The, the furthest to the left area really only works if there's a negative x in the square root. Let's plug in five. If we plug in five, is the square root of five less than negative three? Well, no, because the square root of five is like 2.5. 2.5 is not greater or not less than negative three. It's greater than negative three. So that one also didn't work. What about 10? Is the square root of 10 less than three? Negative three? No, it's not. It's like 3.1-ish, and that's not less than negative three. So what does that mean? None of the zones worked. That means you have no solution. And you should ask yourself, why do I have no solution? And the answer to that question is the fact that you have it less than a negative number. Square roots always produce a positive number. Therefore, it is going to be everything that would force it to be greater than a negative number. And therefore, nothing would force it to be less than that. And therefore, no solution. You can never take a square root and get a number bigger than I can't even say it right at the end. You can't take a square root and get a negative number. Therefore, there's no solution. Boy, I messed that up at the very end of a 12-minute video. Anywho, I will see everybody later. Always check your answers because you never know when something weird might happen. Bye.